Open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 30. And I shall ask that you begin to read with me in verse 24. And we'll read together five unusual verses in the Word of God. The Bible says, There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet go they forth all of them by bands. And the spider taketh hold with her hands, and is in the king's palaces. I want us to look at these five verses today and use these as an illustration of four steps in a successful Christian's life. I do not believe that God plans for His children to be failures. I believe it is God's fondest desire for our life that our, our life and testimony might be successful in every way for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I believe that every word of God is true. I believe every verse in this Bible is the word of God. I believe, as Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So I believe God has a very definite purpose in Proverbs chapter 30 and these five verses that we've read to you. Now I want us to look very briefly by way of introduction at these four little things and use them as a launching platform into our lesson today. In these four little things, I believe God shows us and gives to us four steps in a successful Christian's life. Notice, first of all, the ant. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The ant is an industrious little creature. The ant always seems to be working toward winter time. Winter time in the Bible is a, a symbol, a picture of that time of judgment, that time when man can work no more. And I believe God is saying to us as we look to the ant that we are to prepare our life for that day when we have to face God, for the winter time of our life, when no man can work anymore and we have to face God with our life as it is. I believe God is saying, take a lesson from the ant. Prepare for your eternity. Know you're saved. Get ready to face God. Accept Jesus as your Savior. Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 20 is one of the saddest verses in the Bible. It says the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. So the successful person knows that he's saved. He's made preparation about his eternity. He has personally and definitely and individually received Jesus as his Savior. And then secondly, we notice the coney. The Bible says the conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks. Now the coney resembles a rabbit, yet the coney cannot run very fast and it has no defense of its own. The only means of defense the coney has is to build his house near the rocks so that when troubles come, he can run into the rocks to safety. And I believe God is saying to us that the successful person, the successful person not only knows that he's saved, but he'll build his life on the right foundation. And the Bible tells us very plainly that the right foundation is the Lord Jesus Christ. Multitudes of people have accepted Jesus as their Savior, but they're not building their life upon the precepts and the teachings of the Word of God. They're not building their life according to the illustration and the example and the instructions of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says very plainly, other foundations can no man lay than that which is laid, Jesus Christ the Lord. He is the rock. He is the foundation. Dear friends, if we'll build our life upon Christ, when those troubled times come, 
when the enemy comes, when Satan comes, we can flee to the rock. We're on the right foundation. We're in the rock. And uh, we're secure from the storm, from the trouble, from the strife, building upon the right foundation. And then thirdly, the next little thing is the locusts. The Bible says the locusts have no king, yet go they forth all of them by bands. And I believe God's Word is saying and illustrating to us that the successful person not only knows that he's saved, he builds his life upon the right foundation, the rock Christ Jesus. And I believe God illustrates the third step by the locust. And I like to use the locust as a picture of the local New Testament church. The Bible says the locusts have no king, yet go they forth all of them by bands. Now you say, wait a minute, preacher. How can the locusts represent the church? We have a king. Yes, we do. But our king has not come to set up his earthly kingdom or to occupy his earthly throne. Our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, is now in the priestly ministry. He stands before God as our intercessor, our go-between. He is coming one day as King of kings and as Lord of lords. Until he comes, the Christian is to band himself together with other Christians in local New Testament churches and go forth as an army for God to reap a harvest of souls for Jesus Christ. Now, I believe Jesus, God's Word and Jesus would teach us through the New Testament that the successful Christian, the successful person, not only knows he's saved, he builds his life on the right foundation, but he also identifies and becomes an active, faithful part of a local Bible-believing New Testament church. You know, nothing. there's nothing the devil likes more than to see Christians outside of fellowship and service in the local church. Think with me just a moment about the locusts. The locusts, as spoken of in the Bible, is a grasshopper type of little creature that went together literally in bands of thousands and even millions. It has been said that they would be so thick at times they'd blacken the sun or blot out the sun's light. People would see a band of locusts as they would come on the horizon and they would run in fear and they'd hide and try to find safe places because of the power and the fear that this band of locusts had upon the earth. Not one twig was left untouched as this locust went across the earth. People were afraid. They, they had great respect, if you please, for the band of locusts. But who's afraid of a locust? Who's afraid of one locust? Why, we walk outside and we see a grasshopper sitting there on the sidewalk and we'll walk up and stomp on him with our foot and say, look, that's just a grasshopper. But if there were so many grasshoppers, so many locusts that they blotted out the sun and they ate all living uh, vegetation and people's lives were, were hindered and hurt and, and people were afraid because of the vast number, that would be different. And you know, I'm convinced that old Satan sees one Christian out in the world, not a part of the church. And he walks over and says, look, just one little Christian, and he steps on him. But all oh, the Bible says concerning the church, Jesus said, Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If there's one thing that old Satan's afraid of, it's a church that's sold out to Jesus Christ. It's Christians that's banded together by faith in the Word of God and a covenant of doctrine whereby they seek to evangelize the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. And the promise of God is that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So I believe God is saying to us that the successful person not only knows that he's saved, but he builds his life on the right foundation after he's saved. And he identifies himself with a local New Testament Bible-believing church and serves the Lord. And then the fourth little creature represents the work of a successful Christian, a successful person. It says, The spider taketh hold with her hands and is in the king's palaces. I believe the work that's illustrated here for the successful person is the work of soul winning. 
the work of reaching people for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now may I say to you that man is never at his best until these four things are evident in his life. Man is never at his peak until he can say, I'm saved, I've built my life upon the right foundation, I'm a faithful, active member of a Bible-believing New Testament local church, and I've given my life through my church to win souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. No man has ever found a greater responsibility or a higher calling than that which is laid out in these four verses. But let us look for our message now the, at the spider. The spider presents the first work of the church and the first work of every Christian. Too many good people and good churches are substituting good works for the best work. Jesus wants us to love him first and love him most. He desires our first love, but also he desires for our life the first work. And the first work God intends for the church and for the Christian is to reach others with the gospel, win souls for Jesus Christ. Now, let us look at the spider for this example in soul winning. I ask myself as I begin to study this, what purpose is there in a spider? What purpose does a spider have upon this earth? What does the spider do every day, long, uh, every day, all day long? When the spider gets up, if he gets up in the morning, until he takes his rest, if he takes a rest, what is the spider given over to trying to accomplish? And as I began to look at this, I found out the one thing the spider does every day of its life, everything that he does is to try to catch food. To try to catch food. Now... With that in mind, let us realize that it is our job every day and everything we try to do for God ought to have as, it, uh, as its ultimate purpose trying to catch people for Jesus Christ, trying to win souls to the Lord. Now let's look at the spider and learn some things about soul winning as we take a lesson from the spider. First of all, I found in studying about spiders that spiders have different methods of catching food. I read about one spider that weave, weaves a web, and he waits for some fly or some insect to fly into the web, and he's tangled, and the spider will use that web to capture his victim and get food. I read about another spider that runs his prey down. He just gets, gets out on, on the road after them, you know. He just gets on their trail and pursues them and runs them down until he captures them. I read about another spider that lies in wait, and he just waits for his victim to come along, and just at the right time, that spider will spring out on his victim and catch his dinner. I read about another spider that out in southwest Texas that's called the trapdoor spider. He'll dig a little hole in the ground and he'll take the dirt and some straw and he'll make a trap door and uh, he'll put it over the top of the hole and he'll hinge this door on one side. This spider gets down in the little hole and he'll open that trap door up and he'll wait for some little bug to come along. And while that little bug approaches unsuspectingly, just at the right moment, at the right time, the spider, the trapdoor spider, will throw open the door and reach out and catch dinner. Uh, he, he has his method of catching food. My favorite uh, is this spider that spins one little web. And he, he, he's one string. He attaches it to something up here, and he puts some sticky stuff on the bottom of it, and he catches that little string, and he pulls it back and he waits for some unsuspecting bug to cross by, and just at the right moment, he lets it go, and it swings over, and that gooey stuff sticks to the bug, and the spider goes out and gets his dinner. Now you say, Preacher, what are you trying to tell us here about the spider? Spiders have different methods of catching food, but all spiders have some method of catching food. And I believe God would tell us and have us to know that every Christian ought to have some method of reaching souls for Jesus Christ. 
Now, your method may not be like my method, and my method may be different than your method, but God intends for every one of us to have some means and some method of catching food. We shouldn't spend our time criticizing somebody else's method that's winning souls and reaching people for Jesus Christ. What we should do is to give our effort and our energy in putting our method to work that we might catch people for Jesus Christ. Don't criticize and quibble over methods. God help us to do our best to catch folks the best way we can that we might bring people to Jesus Christ. But all spiders have some method of catching food. Secondly, I found out in studying about spiders that spiders live everywhere they can find food. I read about one spider that lives in the fields. I read about another spider that lives in the woods. I read about another spider that can be found only in the swamps. Another spider lodges only in the caves. Well, I read about one spider that lives only on Mount Everest. And another spider lives underwater. Spiders live everywhere where you can find food. Dear friends, I believe God's saying to us that we as Christians should be everywhere where people need Jesus Christ. God's will for us is that we go everywhere. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 says, But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses of me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. That means every little old speck of ground where people live and don't know about Jesus, Christians should be there and going there and trying to win souls to Jesus Christ. Spiders live everywhere where they can find food. Then thirdly, I found out that some spiders have as many as eight eyes. Eight eyes. Two eyes looking this way. Two eyes looking that way. Two eyes looking this way. Two eyes looking this way. You say, preacher, what in the world is a spider going to do with eight eyes? Look for food. Look for food. A spider's always looking for food. He's always looking for something to catch. And dear friends, it ought to be our goal, it ought to be our purpose to be constantly on the lookout for people who need Jesus Christ. I found out in my lifetime that people don't get saved just in the hour and a half visitation time set aside for the church. They don't get saved only on Sunday morning. I found out that people get saved on Monday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. They get saved at church and in the home and at work and on the street and in the fields, anywhere, anywhere where people live. There's prospects in soul winning and we as Christians should always be looking for souls to be won to Jesus Christ. Boy, we've got a bad attitude ter uh, many times about soul winning. I heard a man say, well, we'll just wait for the lost souls to come to church and get saved. Well, I've got news for you. God's plan is not that lost sinners find their way to the church and get saved. God's plan is that the church go out and find the lost sinner and bring them to Christ. We ought to be constantly looking for food. Can you imagine a man going down and getting ready to go fishing? He buys a new fishing boat, buys a new motor, buys a, a trailer for his fishing boat and motor, buys the best rod and reel that money can buy. He buys the best tackle, the best bait. He pulls his boat and fishing equipment up into his yard, parks it in his driveway, gets out of his truck, climbs into the boat, baits his hook, throws it out in the yard, and says, All right, fish, if you want me to catch you, you come up here in my yard and bite my hook. You say, Preacher, that's foolish. If you're going to catch fish, you've got to go out where fish are. And God knows that if we're going to catch souls, we've got to go out where they are. It's foolish to think that we can build a building and expect lost people to come to church. God who made us knows more about us than we know about ourselves. 
and he tells us to go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come to Jesus. We're to go out and win them and bring them in. And then fourthly, most spiders, though they have many eyes, some of them as many as eight eyes, most spiders can only see a very short distance. They can only see a very short distance. You say, Preacher, what, what are you trying to get across here by this thought? We should recognize the work and the opportunity God's given us right here at hand. You know, I find among most Christians, we're always looking over in somebody else's field, somebody else's state, somebody else's country, and we're saying, Brother, if I was over there, I could win souls to Jesus Christ. But let me tell you, there's souls right here in this city, there's right here in this area that need Jesus. And if we're going to do God's work, we need to have eyes to see the opportunity that's right before us. I had an old cow when I was a kid growing up on the farm, and I'm sure that cow was a Baptist cow, because that old cow would go over to the fence, ignore the sweet grass out in the pasture, and stick her head through the barbed wire fence, push out into the road ditch, and eat the bitter weeds in the road ditch because it looked better over the fence than it did in the pasture. Now, I, I meet preachers and I meet Christians and I meet Sunday school teachers everywhere that say, up in Michigan, man, if I was down in Texas, I could win souls. And over in Texas, they say, if I was over in Florida, I could win souls. And over in Florida, they say, if I was up in Ohio, I could win souls. But dear friends, I want you to know souls are everywhere and we need to be looking for the opportunity to win them to Jesus Christ right here where we are. In your class, there's people that need to be saved. On your bus routes, there's prospects by the hundreds. On your street, there's people that need Jesus. On your work, there's opportunities to be a witness for Jesus Christ. And we ought to have eyes to see the opportunity right before us and reach people like the spider catches food right where he's at. And then next of all, the spider leaves his mark everywhere he goes. Now, he may not have a crowd to watch him work. He may not have an audience, but he does his work and he leaves his mark. Have you ever been walking out through the woods and walk into a spider web? You may never see the spider, but you see where he's been. He's left his mark. Now, I want you to know, dear friends, we as Christians may not have an audience watching us be witnesses and soul winners, but we ought to be leaving our mark day by day for Jesus Christ as we live and seek to reach others for Jesus Christ. What mark are you leaving on your job? What testimony do you have in your family? What testimony do you have in your neighborhood? We ought to be leaving our mark for Jesus everywhere we go. And then may I also say to you that spiders don't catch every insect they go after, but they keep on trying and they catch some. Can you picture this old spider launching out after a June bug? He leaps on that June bug and that June bug bites one of his legs and kicks him in the face and that spider goes leaping back to church and say, I'm not going out June bug hunting anymore because they treated me ugly. No, oh, that old spider, he, he may get a leg broke and he may get a lick in that time, but brother, he don't quit. Next time a June bug comes by, he'll say there's another dinner and he'll launch on him again. He may not catch all that he goes after, but he'll keep on trying and catch some. And dear friends, we won't catch everybody that we go after for Jesus. We won't win everybody to Christ, but if we'll keep on trying and get our feelings off of our sleeve, get the chip off of our shoulder and put the cross of Christ on our back and just keep on trying. Though we won't win everybody, God will bless us and we will win some. God help us to take a lesson from the spider. And then may I say also about the spider, the spider's presence is not always favorable to the world. Have you ever been walking around your house? You've gotten ready to go someplace? And as you walked around your house by some shrubbery, you walked into a spider web and said, <coughs> you know, you spider web all over you. You didn't say, well, God bless that little old spider. No, you spit and fumed and say, where's the broom? Man, the spider's presence 
was not always favorable. And dear friend, the presence of the soul winner is not always favorable in the community. There's going to be some people that don't appreciate the soul winner, but you put it down, that's our work, and God appreciates us, and He's the one that counts. And then the Bible says, the spider taketh hold with her hands and is in the king's palaces. Ah, I believe God's saying to the soul winner, I've got a special place of honor and a special reward in my kingdom waiting for my people who are faithful in reaching others for Jesus Christ. God help us to learn the lesson of the spider and be faithful soul winners for Jesus Christ. Precious Lord, thank you for the precious Word of God, for the instruction and the simplicity of it. Help us to be witnesses and soul winners for Jesus. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.